Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to Hately Motorsport. We're going to learn something today. So this week it was announced that we got selected as a wild card to the Avalon Invitational, which is a big race they do every year. There's only 20 cars to get through, so pretty pretty cool to be a part of that. I thought today's a great day to catch up on, I normally do this Friday night, but it's a good day to make a couple of videos, catch up on some maintenance on the car. One of the things I've got to do is adjust the seatbelts. And I get a lot of guys coming up to us and saying g'day, which we love. The number one requested thing in these videos is they wanted some more technical information. Now this is something really simple. I've picked up that a lot of guys don't seem to get is how the seatbelts work on these cars. So I thought I'd make a quick video. Now bear in mind, the more I seem to learn about these cars, the more I realize I don't actually know. So if you're one of the guys who actually know how to make these things fast, boy, have we got a job for you. Generous salary package of beer and high fives. But let's get into it. Don't take my word for it. Please, if you, you know, talk to your chassis builder, talk to your, your, your scrutineers and your tech guys about how to do it. Read your rule book. There's a pretty good, pretty good explanation of it in our rule book anyway. But this is what I believe should happen. And watch till the end, because I've, uh, I've got another tip that I've learned since racing these things that works really good. Now I'm gonna say, the seat belt thing and seat height should be one of the first things you do when you get a new car. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I put this, bought this chassis, the first thing I did, when it was still a bare chassis, is I dropped me, had it sit on the ground here, I dropped my seat in it, worked out my seat heights, my head heights, um, and how the seat belts were gonna work. And we actually had to change the chassis to make it work properly. And, and look, when you get a new car, a new chassis, it's the first thing you should be checking. Now, if you look here, with this particular bar here, originally it was mounted down here. When I bought the chassis, that was the first thing we noticed. We put, dropped the seat in and the bar was too low. What a lot of guys are doing and seem to hook the seat belts around this bar down the bottom, which is okay, and run them up over that bar through there. Now, what's got to happen though? It's got to pass through the seat when you're sitting in there, and I'll get in there and show you in a minute, but it's got to pass through the seat without touching anything. Now, I hope you can see that. With the hands device on, and the belt snug down, they should be nearly level or just below your shoulder. Now, the reason for that is that the actual shoulder belts aren't designed to hold you down in the car, they're designed to hold you back in the seat. And the hip belts are designed to hold you down in the car. Um, you don't want them pulling down too much on you because it puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders and, and back. Now, I've just got an old belt here to show you. What a lot of guys were doing, seem to be doing fairly well, was that they would have the belts mounted uh, down here or down to this pipe down here, which is which is okay, that's nothing wrong with that. But they'd have them running through like that, over the seat. Other thing that they would do, is that they would have this bar too high. So when it was coming over top of the bar and through, it would rub on the seat like so, um, with the bar up there. Now I mount them on this bar because I like them as short as I can get them. Just my theory is that it takes a little bit of stretch out of these belts, and these belts will stretch when you have a big hit. Trust me, I've felt it, they do stretch. Um, so I try to keep them as short as I can, I just mount them direct to this bar. But if you haven't got space and the clips come through the seats, you can mount them down here and, and over the top, that's fine. But when I get in the car, a little trick I learned about, uh, someone taught me about arm restraints. As a rule, your arm restraints, which is your arm restraints, you know you're in a real race car when you've got to tie your arms in. Um, you normally got cuffs on your belts, they clip on there. That's pretty straightforward. I haven't got them there in my race bag somewhere. Drop the ring over the top. Hook your belts up. Pull them down tight. Good to go. Now, when you're in the car with a helmet on, and bits and pieces, I've got to fix that. Uh, that can be awfully tough to do, it gets a bit fiddly. So what I tend to do with the arm restraints, I haven't done it on this since I've had these new belts in this car yet, so I'm gonna do it now. Is just get a zip tie. Get 
a couple of zip ties actually and zip tie them on now I'll cut them off later now what happens when you get in the car is that's already there ready to go hook it up doesn't get tangled you don't forget it good to go Ready there, clip your arms on and you're right to run. Unhook your belts and it all just stays there. Get a pair of side cards and snip them off now. So make sure they're folded up out of the way where they don't dig in. Good to go. So if you'd like to see more videos like this, let us know in the comments down below. Uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. We've got a race coming up at Avalon. We'll get prepped for that. And uh, so that'll be the next video this weekend, hopefully. All going well. It's going to be a tough gig with 20 of the top cars in Victoria. Well, this end of the country anyway. Uh, there's a couple of South Australians in there. We'll see how we go.